What's up, everyone? My name is Denzel Mensa. I'm an ENFJ, life and personal development coach, and today I pretty much wanted to talk about something that I have been thinking about since I returned from the last five-day live profiler training event from Personality Hacker. So this was my fourth event that I went to, um, and my second one this year. They have two a year. I was able to go to both the one in May and the one in November. And from both of these events this year, I always just have the most literally like amazing experiences. Um, I meet the most, in my opinion, quality humans because these are people who are all committed and just motivated to being the best version of themselves. Um, to understanding themselves and other people to the deepest levels possible and it just goes far deeper than type you know what I'm saying like this actually for them it, it goes into it's just a whole experience of getting to understand the human experience pretty much and type is like the key doorway to open up the world of being a human so eventually it goes from, you know, saying like, oh, so is this how your tertiary SI shows up to like, wow, so how do you feel like this has shaped your view on um, societal, you know, constructs and, you know, whatever it might be that become even way more abstract than just some, you know, cognitive functions of some sort. Um, so all of that having been said, uh, one of the biggest insights that I've had since the event <clears throat> and I'm still trying to find a way to package it and put it into words so forgive me if I stumble a little bit in my explanations throughout this video but essentially it's the idea that the healthiest people are the ones who are most receptive to and giving of love now I talk about love um, a lot on this channel already. Um, I have a whole video, you know, on the power of love, you know, and I kind of thought that that was going to be like my bow on top of everything that I've talked about, but here I am even further deepening the concept uh, because being the person that I am, I'm just most interested in interpersonal dynamics and intimacy and the nuances there. Um, so what I've come to further realize is that ever since I was younger, I've admired people and characters like Huey Freeman and um, even Oliver Queen um, from Arrow, you know, people who were like more stoic, you know, who are not really as expressive. Um, and who I guess kind of like seemed really interdependent you know what I mean um, maybe that's not the right word but essentially um, independent I guess is the word that I was looking for um, like in a way people who were not really uh, fixated on uh, engaging with other people and did not seem to be hindered by other people um, in any way, shape, or form because they were just so focused on themselves. And these people seem to have the most respect. Why? Because they didn't care about hugs and they didn't really care to be smiley and they didn't care, like pretty much they, they weren't always mean, but they weren't really necessarily nice either. And for whatever reason in our society, we value such people, we show such people more respect those people are way less likely to be bullied or to be messed with whereas like the kinder and more seemingly naive that you are then the easier it is to be bullied and susceptible to some sort of you know just antagonistic kind of uh intentions of some sort you know even then like these same people will try to toughen you up i really admired those people or those types of characters because i feel like a lot of times i'm not necessarily on the opposite side of the spectrum, but I lean closer to that where I am an expressive person. 
I am affectionate, you know. I love giving hugs. I love to be able to smile at people. I just, I love being friendly and kind. Um, and we see it all the time, you know. Kindness and everything can be seen as weakness. Um, and I feel like sometimes people, people who are not even all that kind <laughs> will say stuff like that. And it's just like, well, I don't, I don't know. Like, did you really even try it out properly? Um, before you can even say this, or are you just kind of like saying this because, I don't know. But anyway, I've always admired those people. And it's because a lot of those types of people in real life have made me feel somewhat inferior. Such people have made me feel like something is wrong with me. They made me feel like I am naive. They made me feel like I am too much. Um, they made me feel like I am soft. All of these other things, you know? And I don't believe that I am any of those things. But uh, when enough people have kind of like given you that message, then you do start to have some part of it uh, resonate with you. And so I from a younger age started to adopt some of those qualities like all right I have to tone this down I have to tone that down I have to tone this down a lot and become a little bit more serious and become a little bit more like you know whatever because that's how I will be taken more seriously especially as an ENFJ man you know and that kind of like openness to like you know be expressive and affectionate um, sometimes it was kind of, it was just frowned upon by others. Um, it made others look at you weird. Well, when I was at the event, there were so many people, so many people who showed up the first day of the five. Um, technically, we spent maybe like six or seven days. Um, but they showed up at the event, and the first day... Joel and Antonia from Personality Hacker, they asked, like, what are you hoping to get from this event? Um, and, you know, a lot of the NTs especially, you know, the INTPs, ENTPs, INTJs, and ENTJs, uh, they're kind of like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just... Uh, one INTJ literally said something like, I paid for it, that's why I'm here, pretty much. And it's like, okay. And, you know, they just really appear like, yeah, I'm very strong, I don't really like people, a lot of this feely stuff is too much, it's whatever, um, and they just kind of like play it cool, rational, detached, and collected, and then throughout the week, I've seen ugh, at least 90% of them, just all of that just break, and in the most beautiful ways, because that same damn that I used to admire and even want to emulate, I start to see that in actuality, it, it's, it's more of a it's, a, it's a defense mechanism of some sort. It's, it's, well, let me not get ahead of myself. <laughs> so, for example, one INTJ in particular, the one that was like, oh, you know, um, when he was introduced, it's like, hey, this is so-and-so. So-and-so is an INTJ, and he says that he's here because he paid for it, you know, and he really just was had a very nonchalant type of demeanor and all of that, um, and again, he wasn't mean, but it was just very clear that he did not really care much for interpersonal dynamics. Um, he was just here to get his work done, if you will, and, you know, do whatever. He was really just like, whatever about everything, um, but by the end of the week when we redid everything and it's like what are you planning now to take back with you and we went all around the room this particular individual all he said was yeah this week I felt things and I want to continue to feel things, more things, more frequently. And everyone in the classroom just like roared with applaud. And so I 
think that that's that was just one example of so many that happened like there were so many introverts there were so many INTPs um, all of that that were like talking about like how like they were in they were in tears talking about how they've never experienced bonds like this before they've never ever experienced um, even the joys behind being able to um, interpersonally connect and uh, actually like engage in such levels of intimacy and now it's almost like they're addicted to the feeling and to me it struck me like wait it's not that when people push away people like me that they are actually pushing away this feeling it's more that they don't even know what the feeling is like they've they've never experienced what I've experienced and so because of that then they've very easily rationalized and detached from it and therefore they've like pulled away from it in certain ways you know um and i <laughs> it it makes just so much more sense that when they finally do experience it when they finally do taste it then they don't want to let it go and it almost seems like wait a minute this goes even past type like you are just as addicted to this feeling as i am it's just that because of the type of person that i am i have not only allowed myself um, to have more of these experiences. I've actively sought them out and created them out even before you did. And so nothing necessarily was wrong with me. If anything, and I say this in the least accusatory way possible because clearly traumas and experiences, you know, build these things, but it was more of something that was kind of wrong with you. Um, these people who are really strongly averse to a hug or you know to expressive words anything that's feely you know there's something that blocked that from them and when they really allow themselves to experience the beauty behind emotions <laughs> the beauty behind um, connection and intimacy the beauty behind being vulnerable in certain fashions and being seen in that way I think that just as a human being in general regardless of what type you are when you really experience it properly you're gonna want more you're gonna want to seek more of it and man I found that to be just so wonderfully uh, just beautiful uh, to even like think about um, and yeah that, that brought me a lot of validation. But then it also made me start to wonder, man, I wonder how many people are suffering because of their traumas that they've had in the past. I know of someone who, her father's pastor, her mother is a first lady of the church, you know? And uh, when she was younger, then she said something along the lines of, uh, she rested her head on her mother's shoulder while the, while they were like sitting up front um, at church, and you know it was just you know a turn like a form of like endearment or whatever. And the mother scolded her, and this girl never did something like that to her mom again. <laughs> and can you even imagine how many people have gone through such things like that? And then they close themselves off, especially at a young age, they close themselves off from certain types of expression and, and um, affection because they were shunned in such a way. And who knows, maybe because their mother was, like that girl's mother was also probably raised in that same fashion. And so just that stoicness just kind of like, just kind of like keeps on going like deeper and deeper. There's more roots there. Um, but I, I suspect that this is not how humans are supposed to be. I feel like humans, in their full entirety, when we're actually really healthy and free, then we don't have these protective dams up. These walls are not up because we have an openness to love. We have an openness to expression, to affection, all of that. 
And when we have that kind of openness, then the, the floodgates also gush in to everyone around us. We just radiate love. We just radiate compassion. We radiate empathy. We radiate warmth. And people who are not used to that kind of radiation, well, they feel like they're getting burnt. And then they realize that, wait a minute, either I'm getting burnt because I haven't been in the sun long enough, and that's probably because from a young age, I've, I've ran away from the sun for so long. So any type of sun ray hits me and this hurts. And there's so many people who are in the darkness that they're afraid of the sun or anybody who might reflect the sun to them. But when they actually allow themselves to sit in the heat, to get small doses and progressively grow accustomed to the sun's warmth, I don't think they ever want to return back into the darkness because they realize that it's so much more freeing to be basking in the sun like that. Um, and I just realized I went pretty abstract there, but essentially the sun is the warmth of love, the warmth of connection, the warmth of vulnerability, the warmth of intimacy, expression, affection, all of that. All of this stuff that we think that is corny, I think that it's, it's, it's beauty. It's, it's part of what makes the human experience in life beautiful. And when we meet people, or when we become people who lock ourselves away from that, that in and of itself is an indication of lowercase or uppercase trauma. And when those types of people meet people who are not traumatized in the same fashion or to that same level, then those types of people can project onto the other types of people. And then it kind of like spreads it unless if the lovers become secure with what they have and who they are, and then they push back more, a little bit more. It's like, no, I get it. You're trying to make me out to seem like I'm weird. You're trying to make me out to seem like I'm too much. You're trying to make me out to seem like something is wrong with me because I'm too naive and I'm too affectionate. I'm too open and you know loving and caring and whatever it might be. But in reality, something happened in your past that's caused you to be this way. And when we break through all of those walls, when we break through that shell and we crack things open and we see that heart that's been in that darkness for so long and we, we, we expose it to light and allow it to slowly gain power back and energy back from the light, I wonder what's gonna happen after that. I guess in essence, this video is literally about learning how to receive and reciprocate love. It's gonna be hard for many people because things have happened in their past and it's not their fault. But perhaps if we went through the same things that they did, then we would be just as closed off. But I've really come to realize that it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how your brain is wired. Everybody wants love. Everybody wants affection. Everybody secretly wants to be expressive. Of course, how expressive and how affectionate you be varies on the type of person that you are. I think that's where things are. But at the end of the day, if you're on that extreme of like, you're just very averse to hugs, you're very averse to any type of like verbal affection and expression and stuff like that, anything that's feely, you're just really averse to that. I hesitantly, but kind of confidently believe, as of right now at least, that something happened to make you be that way. And if you were to really taste an experience what people who, who love freely and openly and take that risk um, actually experience. Man, the world is your oyster. I wrote a poem 
a few years ago um, called The Caged Man. And I sometimes post my spoken words on here as voiceovers. Um, I took a random photo at a aquarium and later on I just looked at the photo I was like huh I think I can write a poem out of this so I did and I actually did post the voiceover for this specific poem here on YouTube if you want to go check it out it's going to be showing um, at the end of this video uh, and I'm also going to put the dis uh, I'm also going to put it in the description below for you guys to be able to go and look at but it pretty much touches on this exact thing Release your heart from that cold calcium cage and allow it to be exposed to the light. It's not going to be easy. It's scary, especially if you're not accustomed to it. It's going to take some time to acclimate. But that's where true bravery comes in. The strong and brave people are not the ones who cower away from love and from interpersonal dynamics and affection and stuff like that. The strong and the brave people are the ones who allow their heart to be exposed and continue to put it out there, not only just for the sake of expression, but also to heal other people so that everybody else can also start to do the same thing. And I feel like once we have a spirit or a morale of that, that just floods everywhere, I can only imagine how much better the world would be. So if you are a healer in this world, if you are one of those people who has felt shame your life, your whole life, because you're too much, you're too affectionate, you're too trusting, you're too naive, you're too giving, whatever it might be, I want to be the one to tell you that, no, you're probably not. And that's a gift. And I don't care what somebody else has told you, embrace that gift and continue to not only embrace it, but continue to also share it with the world because the world needs more of that. It's a cold world, it's dark out here. And there are way more dark people. There are way more people who are hiding in the darkness than there are those who are in the light. And let's change that. You have the power to do that. And if you are someone who's in the darkness and you can even pinpoint back to when you laid your head on your mother's shoulder and she scolded you and then ever since then you've had an estranged dynamic with your mother where it's like you know that she loves you but you guys rarely say I love you to each other you guys rarely hug each other you know because it's just very like strict and so now you're even like oh uh, what do I do with this person who's hugging me hey you couldn't help that I understand and this video is not to attack you but I want you to know that there's a whole other world on the other side. And I feel like you should start taking steps today to open yourself up to that. I feel like it's really going to be a pivotal point in your life that will just change the way that you view the world forever. I'm not going to promise that you'll never get hurt. But I do believe that when you do get hurt, you're going to find it worth it. Check out the Caged Man poem. I think you might like it. Anyway, thanks everyone for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, even disagreements, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'll read them and get back to you. Um, and yeah, done. Thank you for taking time to watch that video. If you watched it, whether it be on regular speed or two times speed, I appreciate it. And if you don't mind, hitting that like button for me. It really helps this humble channel out. Also, if you haven't already subscribed and you like the content that I make, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button. That way you'll be able to keep in touch with all the new posts that I make. And then also be sure to check out my playlist where you'll be able to find a lot of my older videos because I think that a lot of those have some great quality content too. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Make sure to leave comments, questions, Book me for coaching sessions at denzelmensa.com and God bless.